What's up, everybody? I have a special guest with me with me this week. Why don't you introduce yourself? What's up? I'm Weston. Get your popcorn <laughs> ready, and I'm here to t- ready to talk some fantasy. Don't worry. The leader of the Division One is here, and he's going to break down this week's matchups with me. I thought I would call in a special guest, so that's why the video is a day late this week. But don't worry. It should be much more entertaining than listening to me talk for the six straight weeks. So let's jump right into the games with me and the fantasy genius. And as you'll notice, uh, the Titans and Steelers already played, so their point, point totals are final. But there's still plenty to go over. For instance, Matt Ryan and Andrew Luck. Ryan looks to have a huge week versus Oakland this week and will surely outperform Andrew Luck, even though he is going against the terrible Jets defense. I like Andrew Luck this week, but Matt Ryan is definitely the top QB of the week, I think. And we have LaShawn McCoy going up against Detroit's defense, and Darren McFadden, who has done a whole lot of nothing this year. Who are you going to give the edge to? I give the edge to McCoy. They're looking to target him more on the passing game and running the ball more, and McFadden against Atlanta Falcons defense doesn't look as promising as McCoy this week. Okay, and let me explain this next spot to you. I have Kendall Hunter in now. That's because Marshawn Lynch was acting like he was going to be hurt. So, for any fantasy noobs out there, if you have an injured running back, you always want to put, and you assuming you have a backup, which you should, you should always flex the injured guy. That way, if he's not able to play, you can put a receiver in instead. Completely agree. Yeah, there's, there's no reason not to, really. So... If Lynch is okay, Hunter comes out of my lineup and I throw another receiver in. If he's not okay, then I obviously roll a receiver in my flex and keep excuse me, keep Hunter in. So as far as question marks go, Trent Richardson is definitely gonna get the edge, assuming I start Kendall Hunter, but if not, I think Marshawn Lynch has a pretty good matchup against New England. Yeah, and I like Hunter a little more this week. They're starting to give the ball more to him and letting Gore take a little rest. But Trent, Trent Richardson definitely gets the edge. He's looking to have a great game against Cincinnati. Kendall Hunter's had over eight points in the last two weeks, but I don't know if he, if it will stick. That could just be a fluky thing because he didn't really do anything at the beginning of the year. So yep. that's yet to be determined. Here we have Eric Decker going up against Dwayne Bow. I'd say Dwayne Bow is a better player, but Decker has a better matchup. He's playing a very weak San Diego Chargers defense. Yeah, I see Tampa Bay getting ahead in this one early, and maybe Dwayne Bowe gets a couple garbage time, maybe one touchdown garbage time. But Eric Decker against San Diego, I think they pass all over them. Monday night, Peyton Manning, he doesn't back down. Also, Dwayne Bowe has a guy named Brady Quinn <laughs> throwing does. to him. He does. So his, his production looks to go downhill. Yes, definitely edge Decker. And then this is kind of a little weird situation that we're only going to be in maybe once the whole year, as we already know what one player has because of the Thursday night game. And I don't foresee Darius Hayward Bay coming off a horrific injury scoring any more than 15 points. Yeah, he. I definitely don't see that. And then we have Antonio Gates going up against Tony Gonzalez, one of two great players in 2007, one still great, one atrocious. <laughs> yeah, Tony Gonzalez has been the number one scoring tight end so far this year. And Antonio Gates has been far below average compared to what his owners wish he was. But So uh, people that drafted Gronk in the first round feeling a little silly? Yeah, feeling just a, a little, little silly. Bit, just a little bit. I think Ben picked up Gonzalez in like the fifth or sixth, too. Wow. He didn't reach for him. Yep. And then we have my flex, which will probably either be Macklin or Bolden. And Bolden's had over ten points the last two weeks, I believe. So... I'm going to go ahead and give him the edge over LaShore because LaShore is playing a tough Philly D, but it will be close. What do you think? Yeah, Detroit just can't run the ball. LaShore has got some talent, but they can't run the ball at all. And Marshawn Lynch is great if he plays. And as far as kickers go, we have one of the best playing for a team that can't score, but they can get close. So I think Greg the Leg will edge out Lawrence Tynes, who has an unfavorable matchup going against the 49ers' staunch defense. Yes, Legatron definitely Legatron. outscores Tynes this week. And then we have the Steelers' D coming away with a measly five points against a backup quarterback and a, a running back that can't run for any more than a yard and a half of play. 
So I'm going to go ahead and give the Cardinals edge. I'm going to say they'll get over five. Yeah, Steelers defense didn't quite do what I expected them to do, and this Cardinals defense against terrible Buffalo definitely give the edge to Cardinals. So who gets the edge in this game? Because I'm going to surprise, surprise, say it's me. I think the fantasy genius will come out on top in this one. Ooh, Barely. An, an upset. Also, the fact that I have a running back on by doesn't help. And here we have a stinker. Record-breaking <laughs> suck in the night owl. Um, as far as divisions go, Rampy's leading. He's tied for first. And Lily is in third place, so that's kind of cute, but... I don't see this game being much of anything. Peyton Manning and Josh Freeman. Cam Newton is out for Lily this week on, excuse me, on bye. And Peyton Manning playing that San Diego defense. Looks like it's going to like be a big week for Peyton. Yep, Monday night, Peyton Manning looks to score lots. Did you know with the exception of the one game that Manning's thrown three interceptions in, he's 11 for zero, 11 touchdowns, no interceptions. I did not know that, but that's <laughs> impressive. Freeman is playing the atrocious Chiefs defense, so he does have a chance to put up points. Yeah, I look for him to get a couple touchdowns, probably two. But. And as far as running back ones go, it looks like two disasters for both teams. Oh, yeah. Rampy has Bush and Forte both on bye, which that's the thing about handcuffs is it's really going to hurt you one week. And he has Demarius Thomas, who didn't practice, and that's it. So God knows what Rampy's going to do about his running back one Who knows? Slot. Who knows? This could very easily be a game that Aaron will lose to someone he shouldn't. Then Lily has Cedric Benson, who's on injured reserve, and she does have Doug Martin, who's been a huge disappointment this year to plug in, but that's not great. Will she plug him in? We just have to assume Hopefully, so. Yeah. We can't. We can't. It's really stupid to predict that like people aren't going to change their yeah. teams because it makes us look ridiculous yeah then we have DeMarco Murray with a terrible matchup against Baltimore's defense going up against the most terrible player in the NFL Sean, Sean Green, Green. Uh, let's just give the advantage to Murray yes I'm not gonna let you say that Sean Green's better I don't care if Murray's playing against like a 16 team defense oh Baltimore's <laughs> defense is not as great as it has been in the past so Murray's gonna have a big game Brandon Lloyd playing at Seattle going up against a questionable Hakeem Nix I think Hakeem Nix might get the play, but Brandon Lloyd, is he's good. He's not that good. I will give the edge to Lloyd, yeah. though, just because someone that's questionable, I just don't like to roll the dice with that kind of stuff. And he's got Tom Brady throwing him the ball. So. Amendola's out for a few weeks. Amendola, that hit on him, not good. And Fitzgerald on the other side hasn't had that <laughs> impressive of a season. But he still fits Gerald. Still fits Gerald. Amendola separated his shoulder from his collarbone, and they think he might like. They don't want to get him back too quick because of possible nerve damage. So, obviously, Fitzgerald's gonna get the edge over. Let's see who our Rampy has. Golden Tate, not particularly good, and that's it. Yeah. So Aaron's really, really thin this week. He is. Plus, he have he has Brandon Pettigrew, who's not good on top of being hurt. Yep. And he does have Jermaine Gresham going up against Cleveland, so he'll probably plug him in. What do you think about Brett Selleck this week? Brett Selleck, I, I think he has a big week because of Detroit. They give up a lot of points to tight ends, and Mike Vick, he's got to throw the ball to somebody, and I think he likes to throw it to Selleck this week. All right, I'll take it. Then we have Nate Burleson going up against Mario Manningham, neither of which should be starting in any lineup. But I'm going to go ahead and give the edge to Burleson. I don't know. Uh, the Giants' defense is pretty good. I don't I don't see either of these players scoring over five points. Yeah, though. not much to talk about here. Uh, David Akers is all powerful, especially <laughs> when he's going up against someone with a bye. Yeah. Advantage Akers. Ravens' defense going up against Tony Romo, who threw five picks last week. Yeah, I still believe in Tony Romo, though. And off the bye, he could, he could do something, but... I think the Ravens' defense will outscore the Packers against Houston Texans 5-0. and 5-0 and Houston Texans with a very strong offense, powered by Matt Schaub in his one-and-a-half ears. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, who are you giving the edge to here? I'm giving the edge to Night Owl just because record-breaking suck is so thin, 
and I think the Night Owl takes it. Yeah, I don't really foresee Aaron being able to win this, as it looks like about half of his lineup is either out or on bye. Advantage Night Owl. Here we have, dun dun dun, the game of the week. Oh yeah. Weston, this is you versus my cousin Spencer, who is a self-proclaimed waiver wire god. <laughs> So let's just jump right into it. We have Eli Pussy Willow going up against Matty Stafford. The Matty Stafford that's only thrown three touchdowns this year. What do you think about this one? I'm not loving Stafford this week, but um and Eli Manning not loving either, so about even with those two guys this week. Are you gonna plug Flacco in? He's playing Dallas. I thought about it and I It'll probably be game to time decision. Maybe get here a couple more things might put Flacco in. I, I'm not sure yet. Didn't you plug him in last week and he screw you over? Yes, <laughs> yes I did. Yes I did. That's one of the reasons. It's re- it's Flacco really Flacco is out of my lineup right now. It's really hard for that to happen and then to go back to the same guy next week. Yes, it especially is hard. when you have someone like Eli that's a very good quarterback. Yep. I'm gonna give the advantage to Eli though, just because Stafford has only thrown three touchdowns this year and I'm just not really that impressed with him. Yep. They're both playing good defenses, so. Here we have Adrian Peterson, who has, guess how many touchdowns this year? One. One. One wow. touchdown. And he left practice. Fortunately for Spencer, he has Toby Gerhardt. So it won't really matter. Yeah, either way. But, I mean, he'll have a guy to start no matter what, but one will be much more productive yeah, definitely. than the other. Either way, I'm giving Jamal Charles the edge here. Oh, yeah, he's looking to have a huge week this week, I think. But Peterson, definitely, if he plays, he could have a Good week, too. Second highest running back score, Jamal Charles. Pretty good stuff, yep. especially coming off of that torn ACL. Here, Ryan Matthews, who I do not trust because he doesn't really have a defined role in the offense yet, although he did get plenty of points last week. Yep. Going up against Law Firm, who would normally be outclassed, but he's playing the Browns. The Browns' defense has been awful this year, and Green Ellis has been getting – when they give Ben Jarvis Green Ellis the ball, they win. So I think they're figuring that out. So I think they're going to give him the ball, and they're going to win. Okay. I'm going to give the edge to Matthews there. Yeah, me but, too. Uh, I think he has a huge week against Denver. Here we have a potentially injured Wes Welker going up against Megatron, who you took in the first round. Round one, one touchdown. That's yeah. kind of cute. Are you regretting that? I'm, I'm regretting that, but – you don't draft a wide receiver or a tight end first round, man. It just doesn't work. Yeah. I'm going to give uh, the edge to Welker here. Even though he's hurt, even though Brady has to go into Seattle and play in that loud place, I don't think Megatron will do anything against Philly. Yeah. And Torrey Smith, probably going to be facing up against a combination of like Newman and Sensible. So I have a feeling he'll score more than two points. Yeah, I like Torrey Smith this week against Dallas defense, even though they, Dallas defense has been better this year. But Rob, Gunkrow- Rob Gronkowski going up against Jay, J- J- Joel, Dr- Joel Dreesen. J- Joel Dreesen. <laughs> I look for him to have a touchdown this week. Is, but Why don't you explain this to us, Weston? Well, my tight end, Jimmy Graham, touchdown Jimmy Graham, Touch- got a bye. <laughs> oh. So I had to pick up somebody in Dreesen. Well, two weeks ago had two touchdowns, and last week didn't have any, but I think rolling the dice. Denver's going to pass a lot, and I'm rolling the dice on that one. What do you predict? Ten points? I predict eight or nine. Eight May, or nine. Maybe ten, over ten if you, I'm lucky. But I, I would kill for a tight end that would give me eight or nine. I got Gates putting up ones and twos. <laughs> yeah. I'm giving the edge to Gronk here, though. He's, He's just, just Gronk's too good to not give the edge to. And then here we have Vincent Jackson, who is playing the terrible Kansas City defense, going up against Stephen Jackson. Stephen Jackson. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to put Pierre Garçon in for Stephen Jackson because Miami is the number one in NFL against rushing. So I'm going to change that to Stephen Pierre Garçon. Jackson's a huge disappointment anyway. He has been. No touchdowns. I'm giving the edge to Jackson here. I don't like him as a mm-hmm. player, but he has too good of a matchup. I don't. Th- Garcon hasn't done anything since week one, man. That's I don't, true. I don't think. I don't I, really trust him. I think it's because he's been gotten off the injury and he's been a little shaky so far. But I think this week might be his week to get back. But they are playing Minnesota, and their defense has been pretty good. 
Jason Hansen going up against. Oh, I'm giving it to V Jax, obviously. Uh, Jason Hansen going up against B Walsh. Blair Walsh. Blair Walsh of the Minnesota Vikings going up against Washington. Now, Hansen's clearly better, but has a worse matchup. And Blair Walsh has been one of the top three kicking kickers this year in fantasy scoring. So That's impressive, but Jason Hansen, I have a feeling that Stafford's going to get him down to the red zone and they're going to stall out, and Hansen's going to get Spencer about 10 this week. I bet he gets about 10 too, but I see Walsh getting maybe more than that. Okay, so I'm giving Hanson the edge, Weston's giving Walsh the edge, and we have the Dolphins and Texans defense. Now, one thing to note about Spencer is he has the most, he has the Bears who have had the, mo- the most turnovers forced this year. Fortunately for him, he was able to go grab whoever St. Louis was playing. So, the Dolphins don't look to have a great week, but it is a good matchup. And then the Texans defense is playing Green Bay, so... Yeah, Green Bay has been a little shaky on offense so far, so I think the Texas defense could get maybe seven or eight points at maybe. the most. Rodgers doesn't throw many picks, man. Yep, that's true. Uh, I think, and with Cushing out for the Texans, yeah, I just thought about that. I might need to go pick up a defense to sub in just for this week. Depends on who's out there. I haven't looked yet. Hey, right before you pick up a defense, you should drop Jimmy Graham and call me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm giving the edge to Spencer here, Weston. What do you think? I definitely am. I, I'm i on a low streak right here. I, I'm scoring low, and I look for a second straight loss. All right. I'm Honest Weston. To, Especially after Antonio Brown got you two points. Yeah, I was hoping for much more than that. Here we have the mighty Sea Gouch going up against Disco Hobbits. They're projected virtually the same amount of points, which is cute and all, but we all know projections don't really mean anything. Jumping right in here, Drew Brees on a bye week versus Robert Griffin III. Now let, let's just assume that Seagouch is going to put in Mark Sanchez and get about four points. <laughs> it doesn't matter if yeah. like, Griffin's coming off of an injury, but I bet Hot Disco's hoping or wishing that he started the Rapist because he had 17 oh, yeah, points had, on his bench. He had a nice game. So, advantage RG3 because Mark Sanchez is atrocious and will probably get pulled midway through the game. He just might. Michael Bernzo Turnzo going up against a weak Oakland defense will outscore Willis McGahee. Yeah, I think he has a great game, Michael yeah. Turner. Uh, Arian Foster, pretty good. Alfred Morris, been a great pickup for Seagouch. Oh, yeah. Kind of kind of saved him. Yep. Seagouch is 1-4, and four, but his team is a lot better than it looked at the beginning of the season. Foster does get the edge here, though. He's just too good. Top tier running back right there. So We have Roddy White and Greg Jennings. Greg Jennings of the I'm Still Hurt Yeah. category. Roddy White definitely will outscore Greg Jennings against Houston if he even plays. Well, I don't think he will. Yeah. So let's look at the – one thing about not having the pictures because the game started is we get to see the bench. Seagouse really has nothing. He has Dez, Dez, Dez who hasn't done anything. Dez is a terrible wide receiver for NFL. Fantasy is not bad. So maybe he puts him in and gets... Maybe. Well, like seven? seven yeah. What can you expect from Dez? Yeah. Not much. The best thing about having a guest here is to save me from my, my own awkward pauses. Andre the Giant and Johnson facing off against Robert Meacham. Robert Meacham, formerly of my team. Um, Andre Johnson... It's hard to give anyone the edge over him when he's healthy. It's true, but he's only had, I think, one touchdown this season because they just don't target him at all in the end zone, and they haven't thrown the ball deep to him at all. So that could be closer than you think. Well, defense has really eyeballed Dez a whole, whole lot. They don't let him get – or not Dez, Andre. They really keep close to him and try to shut him down because really who else does Houston have to throw to? Yeah, that's true. Granted, if you double Andre Johnson, they're probably just going to run it all over you. Yep. Kyle Rudolph going up against Vernon Davis. Vernon Davis, four touchdowns this year. I'm giving him the edge. I'm actually giving the edge to Kyle Rudolph. I like Kyle Rudolph, and the Washington Redskins have given up the most fantasy points to tight ends this year. There's a stat for you. Stat of the week <laughs> right there. Deshaun Jackson facing off with the, the Williams that the Arizona Cardinals have that is out for the year. Or hurt severely. Maybe not for the year, but for yeah. several weeks. 
and let's see who Disco has to plug in here. He has Miles, Miles Austin, Austin. That'd be a good. But coming good off play. of an injury, and then Greg Little, who has a good matchup, but isn't particularly good. Yeah. Um, D- D- Jackson hasn't done anything though. He hasn't. So I'm gonna have to give the edge to him just because neither of the people on Disco's bench are particularly yeah, good. Yeah, I'd give the edge to Miles Austin. I think he comes back and. Really. Yes. Well, I assuming think. he starts him, he might go with Greg Little. Yeah, that's true. If he starts Austin, I think you give him the edge. Dan Bailey, usually very good, but not when the Cowboys don't score points, which has happened every week. <laughs> yeah. So Prater's Sad gonna to get say. Prater's gonna get the edge here for me because he's playing San Diego. It's just yeah. a good matchup for him. And Prater's a great kicker, great distance kicker. So. No arguments there. And then we have the Niners defense going up against the Vikings defense. The cute thing here is that RG three kind of turns it over. He's a running quarterback. Yeah. Chance for fumbles. But the Niners' defense is very, very good. Yeah, you almost can't give an edge, I'd say, about even on this one because of the turnover factor and the great Niners' defense. So. If I had to pick, though, it'd be Niners just because they're so good. I mean, the Vikings can go, can get blown out. Like, if RG3 has another one of his week one-ish games where he plays very well, then remember, fantasy points as far as defenses go – have a lot to do with how many points the other team scores. Yeah. So, I'm going to give the edge to Seagouch here. What do you think? Uh, I give the edge to Seagouch too this week. I think Disco Hobbits lose another one. We're double picking the champion. And that'll put Disco at 3-3. Three 3-3, and three three and three, yep. Started the, off well, but... Yeah, three-game losing streak. Here we have the father-son matchup. Clap for Bacon and Choking Argo. Matt Schaub facing off with Alex Smith. Alex Smith had a three-touchdown game last week. Will it continue? Definitely not. <laughs> Definitely Even not. Even though the Giants' defense is questionable in the secondary, I think Alex Smith isn't going to get that again. So. It, Matt Schaub's been Matt super Schaub's consistent. Great. Yeah, yeah, he's great. Here we have Ray Rice up against Jackie Battle. We don't even need to talk about this. No. Rice gets the edge. Rice, yes. Then Sidney Rice and Ahmad Bradshaw. Well... St- or Stephen, Stephen Ridley, Ridley yeah. sorry. Stephen Ridley has been going absolutely nuts the past few he weeks. Has. Although Bradshaw's been doing well too. I think this is a very interesting matchup to watch. Yeah, because Stephen Ridley against Seattle's defense is really good, and then Bradshaw against the 49ers' defense is also really good. But I'd probably give the edge to Ridley this week because I think the Patriots are going to put up more points than the Giants. They are playing at Seattle, though. so That's true. But Bradshaw's playing at San Francisco. The NFL so. 12th man. It's, a, it's so. about even. Yeah. 12th man, formerly of the Big 12, <laughs> yeah. now of the SEC. Yes. Reggie Wayne, having career numbers this year, will be facing off with Daniel Thomas. Or, no, that's Demarius Thomas. Demarius Thomas. Sorry. Um, both very good receivers. Oh, very good. Both kind of surprising. Reggie Wayne's been good in the past, but this good? This good. He has never been this good. I, Reggie Wayne is having a breakout year that nobody thought he would have. So I love him in this matchup, even though it's the Jets. Still love him with their injuries. Even though it's the Jets with no Revis. I with think no that's Revis. A, I think that's exactly, a good yes. thing. That is good. So I'm giving the big edge to Wayne here, yeah. even though I think Demarius Thomas is a very good player. I think Reggie Wayne is going to put up 20 here, dude. Yep. The Jets are just too bad. And Andrew Luck loved to throw Reggie Wayne the ball. Why wouldn't you? He's so good. Percy Harvin, Victor Cruz. Percy Harvin, more favorable matchup. You could argue Victor Cruz is a better player, though. What do you think? Yes, I kind of favor Percy Harvin this week because Washington's defense, especially the secondary, is very weak. I think they could cut up that secondary and score a bunch of points. But Victor Cruz, with the salsa dances, that might be coming out. (laughs) I love it. Um, I will give the edge to Parvin here, though, just because San Francisco's defense is just so good. And Cameron, with his tight end issues, 54 54 yards. I mean, I wouldn't mind that. Better than what Antonio Gates is getting me. But Owen Daniels, I think, is going to get more. You mentioned earlier that Andre Johnson really doesn't get targeted that much. Probably because Owen Daniels gets those red zone touches. Owen Daniels does get the touchdown receptions. And then Fred Jackson, who I, I guess is back if Keith Cameron's starting him, yep. going up against Malcolm Floyd, who 
I mean, he's not very good. No, not very good. And I don't see Fred Jackson doing much against Arizona anyways. I'll give the edge to Jackson, though. It's almost – it's really, really hard to not favor the running back. Yep. Mason Crosby and Steven Goskowski. Unfortunately for Goskowski, he'll be playing – in the NFL 12th man, unfortunately for Mason Crosby, he'll be playing at Houston. Both really bad matchups for kickers yep. here. But Green Bay's offense, I think, is a little more potent than New England's. Yep, Got to give the edge to Crosby. I'm giving the edge to Crosby, too. And we had the Patriots going up against Seattle and the Giants going up against San Francisco. Who are you giving the edge to here? That's a tough one because both of them are playing kind of – not as great offenses, but San Francisco has been doing much better, so i got to give the edge to the Patriots' defense. I'll give the edge to the Giants here. Just I don't know. Alex Smith had such a good week last week. For people that have played fantasy football for a long time, they know Alex Smith can't be trusted. So yep. I don't think – I think Alex Smith turns it over a couple times here, even though he, he is – if he's been one thing this year, contrary to how he's been his whole career, it is consistent. Yep. And then – no fried rice for you, and the team sucks. <laughs> Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers, Weston, tell us about it. Tom Brady and Rodgers, best quarterbacks in the league. Wait, Rodgers hasn't done hardly anything. That's true. And they're on the road against Houston, and Tom Brady's on the road against Seattle, which is a great defense so far this season. But Tom Brady, he's going to do better than Rodgers. I give the edge to Brady. Interesting. I'd have to agree with you. I mean – it's just, it's tough. I mean, Brady hasn't been doing as well as he has in past seasons, but he's still he's still very, very good. Especially with Brady targeting Welker lately. They've been doing much better offensively, so I, I, I read an article. I read an article that said Welker was being phased out of the offense. Yeah, he was. He kind of was the first two weeks or so. Yeah, but two weeks. And I then mean, it's Wes Welker. Hernandez got down, and then... They had to go back to Wes Welker. Well, Hernandez is coming back this week. Do you think they're going to start to phase him out again? I don't think so. After what happened the first two weeks and then what's happened since then, I definitely don't see them phase, trying to phase him out. I'd have to agree with you. I think the first two weeks was just a fluke. Here we have Reggie Bush, formerly of USC, which is a joke. I, yeah. Okay, that's all we're going to say about that, Pac-10 football. Um. He is playing St. Louis, which is a very good matchup. And Frank Gore, I think he's like the third best running back this yeah, year. Yeah, he's been surprisingly a decent running back, better than decent. So I give the edge to Gore. He's finally turning on the Jets and playing well. You know, I'm going to disagree with you, and here's why. First of all, Reggie Bush, coming back from an injury, is going to be playing the St. Louis, I almost said Cardinals, St. Louis Rams. At home, so I think that'll be very good for him. He'll be playing on that baseball field turn. Oh, I hate that. It's just bad to look yes. at. But, I mean, Frank Gore has been getting his carries kind of uh, contested he, by a little, little guy named Kendall Hunter. So maybe Hunter takes a touchdown away from Gore this week. It's hard to say. I mean, the Giants' run D isn't that bad, so I'm giving the edge to Bush here. And then we see a perfect example of why you do not start Rashard Mendenhall. Man, that was rough to see. Him injured after just six carries for six yards. So bad, but uh, tough break. I mean, it's really, really hard to go anywhere near the Steelers' defense. Or, the sorry, the Steelers' running backs. And Pierre Thomas on by. Let's just throw a name out. Um, Maybe he starts. He doesn't have any. Sidney Wright. Oh, wait. He doesn't have no any running back backs. on his yeah. bench. All right, so thinking about the flex because he also has a buy in the flex. Yeah, well, this is why your team sucks, <laughs> Simon. And then we have Brandon Hartline. He has an Aggie throwing to him, Weston. Oh yeah, <laughs> love Tannehill this season. He's you pick him up, start him. You don't love him I, that I, much. I almost would oh, this week. Wow. I love him this week. He does have a good matchup he against does, St. Yeah. Louis at home. Unfortunately. Julio, unfortunately for Hartline, Julio Jones is playing Oakland. Yep. Julio, Julio. The Julio Jones that likes to score 20 points for no reason. Yeah. So, advantage, advantage Jones, in my opinion. I mean, Hartline had, what, six points last week? Yeah, I, he didn't have a strong week. I think he's worth a flex, but that's about it. 
And then we have Michael Crabtree, who is starting to grow in the offense. Yeah, he had a great week last week. Will it continue? I don't. I don't really see it continuing, just because the inconsistency that he's ha- been having. So I don't see it continuing. I don't see it either. Plus, AJ Green at Cleveland. Green has been great this year. Oh yeah. And you know what? The Browns haven't been great. Yeah. So AJ Green looking to have a great week. Heath Miller, 67 receiving yards. I'm starting to think that that's about what you want from a tight end. It's just looking to be such a barren position this yep. year. And Jacob Tamey, good matchup. Maybe he gets a touchdown. Yeah, that you have to hope for that if yeah. you're Simon. The cure sucks. And then the flex, it's a disaster. We're not even going to look into it. Maybe he starts Sidney Rice, but that's, I mean, come yeah. on. And then kickers, Matt Bryant, going to go off this week versus Oakland. Yeah, got to give him the. Giving him the edge. Yeah. Atlanta Falcons defense is going to destroy Oakland. It's not going to be oh, close. It's going to be It's going to be so many turnovers, dude. Oakland can't pass. I don't even know who their quarterback is. Who's their quarterback? Carson Palmer. Oh, that's right. Carson that's Palmer. Right. Carson Palmer. You know what he likes doing? Throwing interceptions. <laughs> Throwing interceptions. <laughs> and the Eagles defense. Um, or we didn't go over the other kicker. Sorry. Janet. Well, I mean, it's a mirror matchup. Janikowski is not going to do as no. well. And then the Falcons' defense and the Eagles' defense, I, you know, we just j- literally just said the Falcons were going to have a huge week, and the Eagles are playing Detroit. I don't think Detroit will score a ton of points, but I don't think they're going to turn it over either. Yeah. I don't see a big week for Detroit, but the Eagles' defense could turn out a couple. Who are you giving the edge to? Edge, no fried rice. You know what? I'm so confident in my edge of no fried rice for you. If I could type, he would be getting the Combat X EZ pick of the week. Brought to you by Combat X. Stay easy, son. That was Twift Week 6, guys. Week 6, right? Week 6. Week 6. Week 6 sounds good. You had the guest get your popcorn ready. It came out a day late, but I think we can all agree that it was worth it. It was definitely worth it. Closing thoughts, Weston? Good luck in this week, and uh, hopefully I get a win. We'll see if Cameron can start people that aren't injured. Hopefully. Hopefully he can. No telling. That was Twift Week 6. Good luck, guys.